Hey guys, welcome back to the Animal Pack YouTube channel. I'm John Jewett, and if you haven't been following along in my past prep series, did a whole prep leading from the Chicago Pro to Tampa to my Olympia debut, and through the whole process I gave you my updates on my physique, what was changing, the whys behind I was making the adjustments, so I'm going to carry out this process throughout my whole offseason and into the next Olympia of 2020 because I'm, I'm qualified. I got fourth at the Olympia, so um, I don't plan on doing any other shows except the Olympia for 2020 and, and putting it all in to that prep. Just a, a quick catch up for, for post-Olympia was uh, the, the idea of this, this phase, currently I'm, I'm six weeks post-Olympia, uh, was to do, for one, just get remove a lot of the adaptations that occur for, from the dieting process. And there's, there's, you know, you have, when you're getting really low in body fat and, and calories are low and energy availability is low. And what I mean by energy availability is like glycogen storages, body fat storages. When all these things are getting lower, you have lots of alterations that happen in the body. Uh, what, you, what you're actually feeling and then also what stuff that you don't feel that's happening as well. So a lot of this first phase is trying to restore that and remove those adaptations. So like you're seeing like sleep disturbances. Uh, usually you're, you're waking up frequently throughout the night, um, having short duration sleep in lower quality. There's derangements in the GI tract. Usually GI tract slowing down a lot since energy levels uh, are low, calories are low, your body's trying to hold on to this food as long as it can. And uh, then you're having changes in energy level, changes in mood disturbances, uh, food focus, there's psychological changes that are happening on, on prep, decreases in training performance, and then you have like all the blood chemistries that are getting altered as well. Because whether you're natural or you're an enhanced athlete, there are going to be alterations to your, your blood, uh, blood profile and health markers that are going to happen along the way. So we're definitely moving into this next phase for where I'm in right now is trying to get sleep back in order, uh, gym performance back in order. Uh, add a little bit of body fat on to increase thyroid hormone, uh, restore leptin levels, uh, get you back to like baseline normal is what you, what you want to say. And once you get to that level, that's when you're going to have a really productive off season. And it's also vital in this phase too that it's done appropriately. You don't add too much body fat on quickly, and then you're you're left in an already poor position to make further progress for the remainder of the year. So that's where I was for this phase. So coming out of Olympia, uh, been raising food up slowly over these weeks. Uh, just got some blood work done and everything looks really good in order. So everything looks like what it was deranged on prep has come back in within range. And so now we're, we're starting to get into this part where I'm going to start really pushing for more, more growth. So the... Um, the whole idea of what where I want my physique to go for this next off season is to I don't have a lot of weight to improve on, but really looking at my stage picks, at myself where I think I should have more size, and also the level I'm at um, for the guys I compete against. That's who I need to think about too, because it's not like a local show where there's different guys showing up every time. You don't really know. It's just Im improving yourself with from judges' feedback, like. These top 10 guys are probably going to be the top 10 guys with, you know, shifting around. So I need to see how do I compare to these guys. And looking at my pictures, more upper body is needed. Lower body is uh, still kind of a, definitely a stronger point. So more shoulder, chest, and tricep. And, and that's in that order. I think bringing up those body parts would really give me a very, very complete look and a rounded look that I need. I don't have a lot of weight to, to improve on, so I, I'm keeping that keep that in mind when you're hearing me go through all these these updates because I can't progress my body weight up that high. I don't have that much room to go. Uh, we're talking maybe four to five pounds, which can go a very long way. Body weight wise, I, I uh, co my coach Andrew Vu talking and probably 230 is the highest I want my weight to go this year for one to have a shorter prep and to stay leaner and be more productive when I'm in that prep phase. So right now, this morning, I was 220. So we're talking about 10 pounds over the next course of uh, 46 weeks, which is how, how long I have to the next Olympia. So it's, it's just going to be this gradual progression over time. 
I don't need to push body fat high, it just doesn't make sense to. If I was trying to move in the open, that would probably be a different case and a different course of action. So right now, we're I, I broke down my off season into over the 46 weeks into, basically it's probably gonna be like 10, two 10 week hard pushing phases where I'm really trying to really progress strength hard, increase volume in areas that can take more volume. And then there'll be some cruising periods within that. And then probably a 16 week prep, just depending. This is, this, a lot of this is tentative, but I, I have to plan it out this way for the all the way up to my show so we can um, not leave any gaps in this planning process. Once I look at my physique into the assessment, that's how I build my training around that. And then the nutrition is there to support that training. So I, I wanna cover, so I'm gonna get a training later, I'm gonna cover like the nutrition side of where I'm at currently. Um, so what we've been doing is doing a calorie cycling approach. And this is just a way to slowly build in more calories, but also really keep insulin sensitivity high and stay lean. This approach might be different for if uh, you're someone that uh, need to get body fat up higher because those adaptations to the dieting process weren't getting removed quick enough. So if you look at my current pictures, like at 220, you can see like I still have glute lines in, like I'm still ex extremely, extremely lean. Um, for me, being at this, this uh, leanness is not, not an issue. And I have all those uh, dieting adaptations that are removed. My legs are very, very full. Like everything goes straight to my legs right away and everything else seems to follow along. But still really happy with being six weeks post-show. Going into this next off-season phase, it's gonna be very, very productive being this lean with training and supplementation, everything where it's at. So right now my current diet, and I have this posted below so y'all can, can look it out, check it out. I have two very high days a week in, car in calories. Uh, it's uh, 575 grams of carbs. That's pretty evenly spread with a little bit extra around training. Uh, 275 uh, grams of protein and, and 30 grams of fat. And these numbers are just counting, they're not counting vegetables, they're not counting incidental carbs and fats. So the, like that 30 grams of fat is 30 grams of added fats into my diet. Um, and counting like fats that would be in like a beef source, okay? So, uh, and then my moderate days are, are gonna be on, uh, let's say I have three days a week that are moderate days. So it's right at 400 grams of carbs, the protein and the fats are the same. Then I have two low days on my off days, which are 100 grams of carbs and 90 grams of fat. And those, those are uh, a very large reduction in calories, I think it's like 1400 calorie reduction. But doing this all throughout the Olympia, like, uh, I, I'm very well fueled for training, but then I, I can, get back down to this uh, little bit holding less water on my off days and more sensitive state before hitting another high day. So it's been really, really effective. And this is structured uh, strategically. So how I set up my training to improve my body parts and is to have a pull day, a push day, then my leg day. And then I take an off day, then I do a pull, push, and another off day. So I'm training legs once a week. So that high day is gonna be on my pull days. So I had a high day on a pull day, that's gonna carry over into my push day, which is the area I'm still trying to work on. And then uh, that leg day is just, will be a, just a normal moderate day. Uh, same when I go into my, my other two days. So I'll have a pull day, a high day, that, that is gonna carry over into my push day. Cause I train in the morning. So um, when planning out a high day, think about what time you train and what you wanna put a lot of fuel into. So for my pull day, I have two meals before I go train. So I'm not, and I'm coming off an off day. So I'm not fueled completely. Like I have plenty of, of glycogen carbohydrates for training, but then the, all those carbohydrates following training are gonna aid in recovery and get me uh, really full in glycogen and prime for my push day. And so that's why we have the high day set up on my pull day to carry over into my push day. Now this would be different if I trained the afternoon. I'd probably do the high days on my push days and maybe on my pull days have like the last two meals be uh, higher in carbohydrates. And so think about that when you're planning out your, your diet and how you wanna do your nutrient timing and structure high days around it. So that's, that's the general setup. So I'm just gonna slowly be progressing this forward and uh, get into this next push phase where I'm gonna be adding in more training volume into shoulders and probably triceps because they can handle higher training frequencies than say chest. Training chest more than twice a week I've, I've had issues with. 
I've, I've had pec, pec strains and stuff. Usually two days a week is, is, is really good, but shoulders and triceps can handle moving up to three. So as recovery improves and we're adding in more food, um, that's when we're gonna be adding in the training frequency. So today I'm gonna take you through my pull day. And this is my higher rep pull day. So my, and it's structured that way because my first pull day of the week is heavier loads. It's where I'd also have like rack pulls and then, and then I'll have a leg day that has some axial loading too. So this day, I want to be higher rep. I want to take a little strain off my joints and connective tissue. Uh, I still want a good hypertrophy stimulus so I can use a little bit higher rep range to accomplish that. And also I'll have uh, more chest supported work and nothing that's really loading the lower back a lot. So I start this day with an underhand pull down using a, a prime handle. And I, I love this grip. It, uh, the, the supination of the handle really allows your, your elbow to tw uh, twist in just horizontally uh, uh, adduction. And the idea to really hit, emphasize the lower lat fibers, which you're gonna hit all the lat, but to emphasize more of the the, the lower lat, and this is really gonna be improving like your front lat spread, your front shots, is to have that elbow um, adducted and then driving it down towards the hip. That's what I want you to think about during this move, is driving it, driving the elbow down the hip, keeping chest up. Um, what I'm gonna do is work up to a hard set of 10 to 15 reps, so just, just a work set. Back down the weight about 20 to 30%, and do another set of 15 to 10 reps. And the real key on all these back moves is control the eccentric phase. Um, you have to almost be able to pause it at the bottom and then let it up slow. And that's when you're really, really going to load and get a lot of mechanical tension into the lats. Moving on from there, so that hits a good kind of mid-range loading set on the lats. I want something that in the shortened phase in a row. So we're going to hit a little bit higher up into the lats towards like the those mid upper fibers and, and bring some trap in with a hammer strength of DY low row. I have the seat set up pretty high, but the same principle is like keeping the elbows tucked in, using a supinated grip and driving that elbow back and, and really trying to get a good hard contraction and let it out slow. Uh, key here, keep the feet back so you're not using any, any leg drive and drive your chest into that chest pad so you're not using the spinal erectors to get momentum going. Same rep range here as your last one. Hit a set of 10 to 15, back down to weight, hit a set of 15 to 20. So now we want to move up the back even more and why are we doing this the order that I have is because my other back day has a lot of trap emphasis and that's what it starts off with the day. So today I start doing more um, uh, stuff that hits from the lats up into the traps. So that's the, the progression I go through. So I do a rack chin today which I've tried doing on my heavier loading days and it just favors more for, for uh, a higher rep work. And with the rack chin, you want your feet set up on a bench so you could add plates to your lap. It's also much more fixed than a standard pull-up, so you, you can concentrate on applying tension to, into the lats and teres major where you want them. And so this is what this, this one's really gonna hit the teres major more because you're gonna keep your elbows flared out and just pull up until your top your your like your eyebrow level. Um, you don't want to be leaning back. This uh, teres major, it's it's on it's the widest part of your back because your lats come down and they flare out and this last bit of tissue right before the you start on the shoulder is the teres major. So developing that is gonna give you that really widest part of your lat width. Um, so same thing here, I work up to do a set of 10 to 15, uh, back down and weight, actually just do body weight and I do two more sets. These aren't that taxing, so three sets here is, is not that fatiguing. Main emphasis point is really slow the eccentric down and go into the stretch phase and, and really hang down there before pulling back up. Next one, we're gonna move into trap work. So we're gonna do uh, a wide grip T-bar row, chest supported, same rep scheme, hit a set of 10 to 15, back down weight 15, 20 reps. Uh, this one, you really need to concentrate on squeezing the scapulas together 
You're trying to pinch something between your back and then control it down to the eccentric phase. Um, this is going to hit those mid, lower trap fibers and it's a good heavy loading movement. You can hit some rear, rear delts and all these, but um, more so as we take, start taking the wider grip. And then now from there, we're gonna go into more, even more focus for, for traps, upper back, and uh, the top part of the, of the of trap itself. And I do a superset, and it, I've never been huge on doing a lot of shrugs because I have a little bit narrow clavicles. So if you have a narrow, narrow clavicle, the trap develops really quickly and can take away from your width. However, um, I, I, I think I, could, I need the trap development, especially in that upper to mid uh, area. So what I'm doing is a face pull, chest supported. So I'm not gonna be able to use any momentum. It's very fixed. Spreading the straps that I'm using, or you could use a rope to, to really emphasize the rear delts. And on this one, you wanna hit a set of 15 to 20 reps. Then we're gonna go straight in to a dumbbell shrug and do a good two second, one to two second hold of the top and control it down through the eccentric. You don't wanna be moving through them really fast. Come up, hold them hard. Your traps will get so pumped from this. It's a great, great combination. Uh, just did two rounds there. And that into that, use the same weight for both sets. To an isolation for rear delts. I did a pec deck drop set, so get straight to the point on it, um, hit a set of, of 20 reps, dropped weight, and then just went to failure again. And that was it for rear delts. Last thing that I did was biceps. So biceps is a stronger point for me. So this is an area where I, I pull back in volume and just allocate more volume into my back and my shoulder training. And one tool that I use is, is a new fit. So it's a electrical muscle stimulation device. It can make the muscle contract really hard and it, it applies a resistance in the muscle so you won't use as much weight either. You get full on motor unit recruitment right away so the volume you use is much, much less. So I'm only gonna do one set of standing bicep curl with it, all out to failure. And then I'll do one set of a hammer curl with it, all out to failure. And I probably hit 15 to 20 reps within that. Uh, it's also a great way for me to be very time efficient using the new fit machine. And it, it's a great place to use it if you ever get little, little nicks and nags and muscles that just don't feel right. So sometimes my bicep tendon has been getting a little bit inflamed um, right where it comes down, close to the forearm. And so I can use that, and it's actually a safer way to train because I'm using a lighter load, but I still get an excellent hypertrophy stimulus from it. But that's it, guys. That's That wrapped up my training day. That was my high rep day. Uh, through the off season, I'm gonna update y'all once per month and just get, let you see where I'm at and go through my plan. This one was a little bit longer of a video because I had to give a little background of kind of where we're at now during this phase, but uh, please follow along and uh, any questions you have about anything in the off season, anything guys, diet, training, supplementation, why do you do this, why do you do that, uh, leave it below in the comments and I'll make sure in the next video that I answer those questions for you guys. But anyway, I always appreciate the support and uh, look, look forward to hearing from y'all, any feedback you have and we will talk to you guys next time.